Good morning, Tomas. Let me introduce you first. Tomas Gabriel Garcia Mico is a PhD candidate at the University of Pompeii Fabra in Barcelona. I hope I said it right, otherwise you may repeat it. Uh, and your presentation title today is Surgical Robots Allocating Towards Liability. So Tomas is a registered Spanish lawyer and currently a PhD of law candidate with a dissertation on the intersections between law and new surgical technologies, such as surgical robots, from a comparative law perspective. Aside from that, he teaches several courses of law, economics and labor relations degrees, both tutorials and lectures. And as of today, he has been a visiting researcher at the China EU School of Law in Beijing uh, from September 2019 on, and at the Dixon Poon School of Law of King's College in London. He's also been the supervision of Professor Roger Brownsward, who is a member of the Telos Research Group. I'm very curious what you have to tell us today in your presentation, Thomas. Please, the floor is yours. First of all, thank you, Danny and Ido, for this opportunity. And welcome, everyone from, from Barcelona, where I will be presenting you uh, my, my research topic, which is surgical robots allocating toward liability. Is the subject that it's focusing my research at the Universitat Pompeu Fabra, as, as Danny said. So let's start briefly with my dissertation, okay? As, as Danny has said, my dissertation is in the crossroads of private law, new technologies law, and public law, but focusing mostly on uh, the liability in case of injuries suffered by patients while undergoing a surgery with a surgical robot. The, all, all my dissertation is focused on comparative law, both private and public, and taking as the most important legal frameworks, the Spanish, of course, because it's, it's mine, the EU law, US law, and also Chinese law. So first of all, what is a surgical robot? A surgical robot, as you can see here, it is a medical device. It has a legal consideration of medical device that is used mostly to perform surgeries on patients. The, um, we have to distinguish between the medical robots like this one you can see here, the computed uh, actual tomography scanner, which do not perform surgical tasks, but uh, other important functions such as can be diagnosis, like this one, can, be help, can help uh, doctors to decide which kind of problem might be suffering a patient. And that is the clear example of a surgical robot. As you can see in this picture, you have uh, here the, the Da Vinci system, which are this machine with four uh, arms. And the surgeon is operating, as you can see, from a, from a console, which is in the same, can be in the same uh, surgical room or can be even outside the operation room. It has been proven in, in recent studies. So my dissertation, as I said, has to do with problems that might arise from the legal standpoint when a patient undergoes a surgery and something goes wrong. In this case, it's extracted from a real case, of course, not happened in Madrid, but in the United States. A patient, while undergoing a hysterectomy using the Da Vinci robot, suffers from massive bleeding due to um, a mishap on, on the use of the robot that results in her death. So the state of, of the deceased person wants to know who can they sue. And this is a huge problem, as we will see. The starting point is that public administrations in most EU, legal, EU law legal frameworks can be considered liable for injuries suffered by patients under the rule of the vicarious liability, or as we call it in Latin, respondeat superior, which means the liability of the person or the entity who's above the one who has made the mistake, the harm. In this case, the employer, usually under the Spanish rules of vicarious liability, is responsible for the actions or omissions of their employees. But we can also see the private law standpoint, which is the case of tort law, the law of damages. We can have tort law from the malpractice standpoint, from the product liability point of view, and finally, 
the one that is broader and even includes the responsibility of public administrations, which is its insurance. Under the Spanish legal framework, as you can see here, art, we have Article 32.1 of the Spanish Law 40-2015, which deals with the liability of public administrations. As we, I will show you an example of this right now. But public administrations are liable for the harm that people suffers, the administered people suffers, both caused by the normal or abnormal functioning of public services. So as you can see here, the fact that the legal, the, the law uses the word normal means that public administrations can be even liable when something has, when anything has been wrong. Perf everything has been perfect. But a harm that the person is not, in, is, is not supposed to, uh, to, to suffer occurs. So in these cases, even when everything goes perfect, public administrations can be sued and will be liable. In Spain, we have some cases of that. Two examples of different sources of liability of public administrations. As, as if you remember, in the case I said that there was an operation performing a public hospital. So there are hospital staff members who are operating the robot. In this case, if a harm occurs during the, 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 the procedure, the surgical procedure, hospital staff members who belong, for example, this is a, a public hospital in Madrid, the Hospital General Universitario Gregorio Marañón, this hospital forms part of Salud Madrid, which is the public administration, the public health administration of the region of Madrid. In this case, the regional, the regional health public administration can be considered liable for the harm suffered by the patient due to the actions or omissions of the hospital staff members. But we have a second a scenario. As I told you, um, surgical robots are medical devices. Uh, in, well, worldwide, medical devices should be approved by some regulatory agencies. Well, regulatory agencies, like in Spain, in Spain we have the Agente Español al Medicamento y Producto Sanitario, the Spanish Agency on Drugs and, and Medical Devices, more or less like the, the FDA in the United States. If this administration fails to fulfill the regulatory duties it has both pre-commercialization and both and post-commercialization, the Spanish government, in this case the health ministry, will be and can be liable. As we will see, this second scenario is the weakest link of liability. As I told you, um, the regional public health administration can be held liable for medical malpractice, but the state, as, I, as I've just expressed, can be also liable for the mishaps that the regulatory agency commits. Do we have a case of that? Yes, we had in France. In France, in 2014, as you can see here, the Administrative Tribunal of Paris uh, issued an, uh, as a judgment, an arrêt, saying that the French government was liable for, the, for not fulfilling the post-commercial duties of, re of revoking authorization on a, let's say, dangerous medical device. But finally, this judgment was revoked by the Conseil d'État on November 2016. So as of today, we don't have any court who has found liable the state for the uh, breaching of pre or post marketing duties. In Spain, that also has occurred. We, um, there were some kind of, of medical device who mis that mis mal malfunctioned, but the national audience, the Audiencia Nacional, a court in Spain, decided that the Spanish government was not liable. Moving from the public uh, law standpoint to the private law standpoint, we can find that one of the most important parties to be sued is the manufacturer, the person or the company who manufactured, who produced the defective um, medical device. In Europe, we have this council directive, which is dated on 1985, which is really outdated due to the advances on medical devices. As we can see, surgical robots were not expected to exist in 1985. 
but and we are dealing with that right now due to this this outdating of the of the directive and there is no intention of at least uh, unknown intention of modify it and in the united states as some of you may know it's not be, uh, the the legal sources of law are not uh, mostly the, the laws the acts are the case law so we have a broad uh, number of cases dealing with product liability law like those ones i'm citing here in china they have five different laws working or dealing with when a product is defective and in order to know how or when we consider a medical device defective we have to read all five sources of law the general provisions the total law the product quality law the standardization law and the regulation on supervision and administration of medical devices the good news is that the um the in in may this year the chinese parliament the, decided to pass the so-called civil code of the people's republic of china so from 1st january 2021 this mess of different regulations will be briefly reduced to only four sources but we still have this issue because the civil code of the people's republic of china does not define what a defective product is so we have to read all these sources of law systematically a product will be defective and this is important in order to the manufacturer to be held liable for the defects on a product we have to define what is or when a product is defective in eu countries we take into account the consumer expectation test which is an objective test which means that we have to decide what the objective the normal the medial consumer can expect not every consumer but just the media the in the us we have four different tests so i'm not going to deep in this because it will take more than an hour to discuss all four tests in china they are using two different tests the dangerousness of the product and the normative compliance let's read first the article 6.1 of the council directive the european directive as you can see the test is clearly the consumer expectation test because it says that a product is effective when it does not provide the safety which a person is entitled to expect a person not the concrete claimant but every general person taking into account presentation the intended use and the time of circulation in china as i said you can here find the translation of article 46 of the pro quality law one of the five sources of law and um, that they have dealing with this issue saying that defects mentioned in the law are referred to the unreasonable dangers existing in the products that threaten the safety of person or properties so here we have the first test which was the dangerousness of the product or products that do not conform to the standards set by the state or specific trade if there is any so the second test which is which was the normative compliance and moving to the last part of my presentations from the private law standpoint we can also sue the surgeon or